Wally Renee, and I'm going to give you my unbiased review of the new Shining Elite scanner. This scanner has been something that's been really um, talked about amongst all the experts in the industry, and I'm just going to give you my spin on how I think it compares to my Trios 5, my Prime Scan, Prime Scan 2, and Meta scanners. So without further ado, just let's get into some real world cases and talk you through step by step some of the applications that we used it for for the past few weeks. Um, we had a multiple variety of cases with a bunch of different operators scanning from inexperienced to experienced. And so I'm gonna start by just showing you a few little cases. Number one, just for complete arch diagnostic scanning, with AI turned on, such as you see here, it's really easy to use. Uh, it tracks super fast and it auto deletes any type of extraneous lips, cheek, tongue, or fingers that you might have accidentally have scanned. The uh, color is super bright, so I find that even in dark, deep areas of the mouth, it's extremely illuminated. And I find with the AI turned on, scan pattern is not quite as in as important because the camera won't really let you mess up. Um, however, with AI turned on, it is just ever so slightly um, slower than with the AI off. And so as you can see here, it's a more um, deliberately um, slow pattern as you're going around the arches. And you know what, this is great for new users or for people who are inexperienced, such as the operator here that is scanning. Um, this is uh, one of my newer dental assistants and and for example here on the palette where there's some struggling going on the software won't let you do misaligned scans because the AI algorithm is checking to make sure that everything is going to be stitched as accurately as possible and so we have a really good crisp scan here in, in about a, a, a minute or so for each arch and I like that. I like that I could just hand this scanner over to my DA and, and say, go to town scanning and with the AI on, there's really nothing I have to worry about as the clinician because I know it's going to be a decent scan. It allows multiple different bites, bilateral bites. It's really intuitive and I find that the occlusion is very accurate. In addition to that, the arches come in extremely fast. So there's not a lot of pausing like you get with some other scanners. It also has phenomenal ExoCAD integration. This is ExoCAD right here, and you can see we're setting up the case in ExoCAD, um, and I'm setting up for a single unit crown, and we hit scan with the Shining 3D, and it instantly pops up the scan software from Shining. The prescription's already filled out, so there's nothing that you have to do, and you just go right to scan. Um, there's other scanners that have this level of integration, but I find this works really smooth. And so you can see here, this is also um, one of my dental assistants scanning, and you can see um, with the AI turned off in this particular instance, um, you could see that the scanner picks up a lot of information, including um, extraneous soft tissues and things like that. So that's one of the disadvantages of having the AI off, is that you could pick up cheek, lips, and tongue, but She's doing an extremely good job here, and I wanted to pick this case because it's kind of a, uh, the, the molar is extremely tilted and there's a really huge undercut on the mesial surface of that molar, and I want to show you how I think the scanner does a really good job getting proximal contacts. Um, it reminds me a little bit of the prime scan in that regard where you don't have to do quite as much rotations as you have to do with normal active triangulation scanners. So I, I really like that. Also, the margin on the distal was a little bit deep in this case and a little bit bloody. So it was a good indication of um, how well it will scan. Now, onto the lower arch here with AI turned on. Um, this is so that we don't accidentally scan the, the tongue. It works really, really well. And you can see the tracking is nice and smooth and there's no um, jitteriness of the scan. This is just you know bread and butter scanning here with, with my dental assistant. And you know, she's, she's, a, she's a good, she has experience um, with other scanners as well, but she is still relatively new to digital dentistry. Uh, one thing that I find that is um, super awesome in the software is the ability to toggle AI on and off. However, 
I really would like that to be something that you could hit on the actual scanner so I don't have to go back to the keyboard and hit A for AI because sometimes you might want to combine it as you'll see later when we're doing uh, edentulous arch scanning. I find that the auto articulation of the occlusion is really good and so is the automatic cleanup of extraneous islands. Um, you also have an eraser tool which I like a lot better than a lasso tool found on other scanners. And the eraser is quite powerful and big. Um, unlike say for like the trios where it's like a little dot that you have to scribble and it takes forever. So then once you're done designing, you open up ExoCAD and this, the files are instantly there. There's no exporting or importing. Um, they're already automatically imported in and you're ready to go for your design. And they look really good. The color, um, the rendering and the crispness is beautiful. And you, so, so now we're gonna move on to, to copy dentures. So this is, one of the harder things to scan is a denture that has not been relined. It's smooth and shiny. The AI turned off for this is what you want. Just be mindful of your fingers, but it flies. This is real time. It absolutely flies scanning dentures. And I do a lot of dentures, and so this is really important to me. Um, how you hold the denture is critical so that you don't scan your fingers and stuff. With the AI turned off, it'll let you scan basically anything. So be mindful of that. But I found no ghosting, um, no shelling, no misaligned scans when I was doing this denture. And it absolutely impressed me over the smooth, slick palette. This is a very flat palette with like a diet, like just a glossy surface finish. And a lot of scanners struggle with that. Um, whereas the Shining Elite with the AI turned off makes easy work of something like this. <clears throat> As you can see here, um, scanning the palette is super smooth. I was really impressed with how easy it was to scan a denture. They also have a cool denture workflow where you could scan the denture and then you could scan the tissues in the mouth and it will combine the two. Uh, however, I found that the auto alignment of these two is um, not as accurate as I would have hoped. I would prefer a best fit matching and a color coded match to be seen um, on the actual scanner itself. It's a metrology company. I don't know why they haven't included that. The lower denture is even easier. Um, <clears throat> just again, the fingers, it's not a big deal if you accidentally scan your fingers as long as they're not connected to the actual uh, prosthesis because they have a really cool button at the end uh, which enables you to remove all extraneous islands. Um, so anything not attached to the scan with a single click, it'll remove it as you'll see here in a moment. If you were to scan this with the AI on, it would be a slower scan, but you, it would auto delete your fingers as it was going because it would detect that that's not part of the main scan. Um, and this thing just flies uh, with scanning dentures. Again, this is real time. It's not sped up. There's no Hollywood magic occurring here. It's painfully real. Uh, I just wanted to make sure that you guys didn't have any um, edited videos here. I could have cut out some stuff, but I didn't. And it is just, it is what it is. This is actually me scanning uh, this denture here for a patient. And so this is the button that you click and it gets rid of all the islands. As you can see, they're super cool. So now we have a clean denture and then you could put it back in the mouth and scan the bite. And so from here now, we can make a new denture. Uh, we could have relined the denture and scanned it beforehand. And in ExoCAD, check out the models. They look beautiful. Um, they come in in perfect articulation um, and they are absolutely gorgeous. And from this information, we could do copy dentures, refit copy dentures. We could virtually pour up the dentures and make new dentures. Um, we could put this in for uh, all NX uh, treatment planning for guided implant surgery. So now I'm gonna take you through a, a, a different case here. This is a um, prepped veneer case, an aggressive prepped veneer case. Um, and here we have AI turned off and my partner, uh, Mike, scanning. So he's um, a pretty experienced digital dentist um, and he's just going wild with the elite here. This particular case, uh, we had several super deep uh, finish lines, for example, <clears throat> on the distal of this premolar right here, that is a very deep margin down there. I do like the brightness. So I find that some other scanners really, I think they're underpowered. And despite this just having one USB-C cord, 
it, it doesn't have like a, a powered base or anything like that. It, it, it receives adequate power to be able to shine deep into the depths of the mouth, into the deep, dark corners. And I like that. I have not found that to be true with some other scanners where once it starts to get super dark, the depth of field just isn't quite there to get it. The depth of field is impressive for an active triangulation scanner. Actually, at least I believe it's an active triangulation scanner. Um, it, it seems to also capture around corners a little bit better than your standard scanner. Um, it fills in a lot more information than I'm used to for some scanners. Um, and again, it's, it's, I would say, almost prime scan level at filling in information. Prime scan uh, one and two do a really good job at um, basically almost auto rotating for you as you go. And so does this, and especially if you use the the wide, the big tip. So they have three tip sizes. They have uh, small, which is more like a pedo tip. They have standard, which is what is here, which is basically for everything um, except for all on X. And then they have the large tip, which is good for all on X um, and also edentulous, long span edentulous. And so, okay, so this, you know, this was a two minute scan. Um, <clears throat> my partner here is just taking his sweet, ever loving time, probably over scanning a little bit because I don't see any information that he really needs to film in here. It's probably just his OCD coming out a little bit, but we have a really, really great scan. And I feel like um, all the, and you'll see here, you can't really judge the color or the crispness until you throw it into lab software. So this is what it looks like in ExoCAD right here it's it's a beautiful 3d model uh, with with even in a stone view it's pretty crisp i wouldn't say in stone view it's quite as crisp as say a trios which does a really good job with like just uh, ultra defined sharp shadowing at the margin but i would say it's better than um, a meta for sure um, on the crispness and now i haven't used the i900 yet but it seems to be better than my, my i700 in that regard. In addition to that, the STL file, the raw stone file, looks as good as my prime scan um, and prime scan uh, two as well. The coloring is pretty darn good. Um, it's, it's really impressive how bright it is. So here we have now a minimum prep veneer case. So uh, this is this is actually me scanning in this particular case on, on a patient where we're doing 10 minimum prep veneers. So there's really no margins per se. There, it's, it's basically, it's almost like a scanning a, a normal arch. However, what I'm looking for in a, in a minimum prep or no prep veneer case is how crisp the sulcus is on the anterior teeth. Some scanners um, make this area kind of muddy and, and they round the sulcus a little bit so you can't see a really defined crisp line um, right where the sulcus is because that's important. I don't pack cord for my minimum prep or no prep veneer cases. I don't want to put my veneer into the sulcus and, and, and ang anger the tissue. So um, this is a no cord here. And what I'm looking for is how well the interproximals uh, are scanned for, for a no prep, min prep veneer case. That's important. I'm looking for how well the sulcus is scanned in this particular case. And you know what? I think the scanner did, did really well. And again, um, you can't really judge the color clarity or, or anything from the actual scan software because it's not rendered yet. And the rendering actually occurs insanely fast. It's faster than any scanner I've ever used. Um, and that's saying something. I have a lot of different scanners here. We have over uh, six different scanners that we use on a daily basis. And the rendering from this is almost instantaneous. You hit the check mark and it's, it's basically done. On to the lower with AI on. I, as a general rule, um, if you're worried about cheek and tongue, put the AI on. It is a slightly slower scan, but you'll have a lot less cleanup on your model. And I am not able to comment on if it's more accurate with the AI versus not having the AI, but I will say this, um, your scan pattern is ever more important without the AI on. Uh, so you need to have confluent overlapping passes. When you turn AI on, it seems to be 
more forgiving in that. So it, it, it seems to be um, to the point where it tries not to let you make a mistake when, when you scan. So here we can see the lower arch and uh, with AI on, and I'm gonna hit this little button right here that's gonna remove any floating islands. It's gonna look gorgeous. Bilateral bites here, they come in really fast. One thing that I will say is that I found the, um, the articulation to be accurate from this software. Uh, when I view it in laboratory software. And I think that's a testament to this company as uh, having a metrology industrial um, background. Um, stitching meshes seems to be something they're really good at, which is why I would love to have the a best fit algorithm option in the software and color coded differences. Check out the models here in Exocad. Um, crisp sulcus, uh, well-defined interproximals, um, all the things that I was looking for in a no prep or min prep veneer case are, are really well captured here uh, with the software, as you can see, rotating around in front of us. And they're just super detailed. Um, this is my, <clears throat> of course, my wax up of my no prep veneers. Um, everything is just beautiful, and the provisionals that I printed fit perfectly. Edentulous scanning, I find personally best to have AI off, but you might want to play with this to decide what's best with you. It absolutely flies. Uh, this is real time. Tissue retraction is super important when you are doing edentulous arch scanning. Um, I find that this scanner scans palettes extremely well. It doesn't seem to ever struggle for me uh, when I'm scanning. I've done a number of dentures with it now, uh, three dentures. And, and it's just been super easy to use, especially on the maxilla. Um, here now, it all is also auto-deleting some soft tissue that I folded over the hamular notch or the um, pterygo maxillary notch there. And the borders are, are really, really good. Um, I like to oftentimes stop when I'm doing an edentulous arch scan and erase um, some of the borders and capture it in one confluent motion. So that's what I'm going to probably do here. So we're going to just pause the scan, get our eraser tool. And on, on this one side, we're going to erase <clears throat> the tissues and recapture it at the position that I want it. I find it hard to do both sides at the same time. Um, so I always split the maxillary arch into sections. So here you can see I'm using that eraser tool. And now um, I'm going to go back. I like, I like the other side. It's great, but I'm going to go back now and capture my hamular notch and into these borders. It does a really good job at just picking up and just going. And here we're filling in areas where I can. And that's, that's probably all I need. And this is going to this is going to be adequate enough for me. And there's a true mucostatic impression everywhere where you're not pushing or compressing uh, flabby ridges or edentulous ridges. Really nice scan there. And again, real time here, um, there's no real movie magic. Here on the lower, I scanned multiple, multiple, multiple times. Um, this is my, I think, last attempt at scanning the lower. I find lower is more difficult. The AI is off. One thing I will say, I get disorientated with this camera. The little green square, I don't like that. Uh, I, I wish it was the size of the actual um, scan window. That would be so much more helpful. So for the shining folks, um, this little target in the middle is worthless to me. Can you make it to where it's the actual viewable area of the camera so that I don't get lost when I scan? Uh, I have a number of people complain about that as well. Especially on an edentulous ridge or an all in X case, you get lost uh, because the, the target there isn't really the scan window. And so that kind of forces you to look at both, um, both windows at the same time, which is annoying. So you see the little window on the top left, which is like the live uh, feed from the camera and look at the 3D model being built and kind of bounce your head back and forth as you're scanning. Whereas if they would have just put the actual size of the capture window based off of the tip size that you put on, it, it honestly would take this scanner, and make, which is a really good scanner, make it even that much better. Here now, so one thing that I found with the dentulous arches on the lower, which is honestly the hardest thing that you could scan short of a day of surgery 
all on X lower. Is toggling the AI on and off helps. So if it's if it's struggling to pick up, toggle the AI on. It'll then it'll ignore the noise of the soft tissue, which might have slightly have moved. Toggle the AI on, it will let you then recapture. And then what you have to do is quickly toggle the AI off and let it go. Now, it is kind of annoying having to do that on the keyboard. Again, maybe a double click here or a, or a single click and hold to turn that AI on and off as you're scanning would go a long way to make something like this smoother so that I don't have to hit the keyboard um, on the computer. But I do like having the option to toggle it on and off. Um, it's A on the keyboard for AI, and I do it often when I'm scanning, and especially when I'm trying to re-pick up on areas. So now we have this edentulous uh, lower arch scan, and it's, I, I would say this scan is a seven out of 10 right now. There's a lot of things I don't love about it here on the lower. There's some open meshes. Um, I was able to get into the retromylohyoid fossa and um, all the way up to the pterygo mandibular raphe up the retromolar pad. Um, so it's really good, better than most scanners on the market. Um, however, one thing that I will say is when you trim the model and then you want to go back and refill it, you have to be patient with the software as it tries to um, reconnect this scan. And again, toggling that AI on and then toggling it right back off is sometimes a smart way to do it. Um, or leaving it on, you have to see, I, I toggled it off um, and I toggle it back on from time to time. Well, here we have a usable lower arch scan, which is more than you could say for many scanners on the market um, that struggle immensely. And this was not an easy lower arch scan. The, the patient's tongue is super huge and hyperactive here, uh, bouncing back and forth. Here they, here's how the edentulous arches look in ExoCAD. They look gorgeous. Um, they come in at the proper vertical using the denture scan workflow from this. You could do some amazing things. Their models are some of the best edentulous models that I've seen. The color is hyper real. Um, totally impressed with the way the scanner handles. Edentulous arch scanning, as long as you the operator does your part and retracts the tissue, it doesn't have everything bouncing around. You're going to be able to design and fabricate some amazing dentures and prosthetics using um, data from this scanner. As you can see here, we we love we love this kind of technology uh, for for removables. Um, so so we've we've gone to the, all the kind of common general dental workflows now, and I I feel like I need to now take you into the the all and X uh, workflow where where we're going to go through some very very difficult cases. Um, this, this particular case here, for example, is day of surgery. And these are the iCam scan <laughs> caps, which are the most worthless scan caps on the market. They're polished chrome. Uh, like, you know, it looks like they just literally took car bumper. It's so shiny. And uh, every scanner struggles with these. I have no idea why they would ever come out with um, tissue caps that are like this. But thank goodness for the intraoral photogrammetry. It works flawlessly here. Um, the accuracy of this passivity of fit we found on the multiple cases we've tested it with to be phenomenal. Um, it's a genius workflow. And so if you do a lot of implants, even the stitching to the soft tissue is smooth uh, as it all combines the data. I wish the, and the bloody field scanning is really pretty good for here. I just wish it, it tracked on the lower better. Um, on the maxillary arch, it's one of the easiest things to do, and it's an open library system, so you could put any kind of library in there and, and export the locations. It also works really well with other scan bodies on the market that are more modern, like the IO Connect scan bodies from True Abutment. It took like three seconds to scan those. I like these scan bodies because it raises them up off of the bloody tissue, and then you could scan your, your bloody soft tissue scan with your little caps. Um, these caps are also not super well designed as they're undercut. Uh, these mushroom caps, they have another cap option on the market that's better. It's more dome shaped. Um, if you if you get the IO Connect kit, make sure you get the, the small dome shaped caps versus these mushroom shaped caps. Um, but it did really good job stitching based off of that palatal marker, um, the multiple different scans that we made. 
But again, the maxillary arch is not really a true test. And yes, this is an extremely bloody field. Um, there's blood everywhere. And it did, a, it did a good job. We were able to get really amazing results, both using the IO Connect workflow and the intraoral photogrammetry workflow from the scanner. Um, and we compared it to the iCam um, on fit, and we couldn't tell the difference. The final rendered maxillary bloody soft tissue scan was great. Um, this is the model that you could see rotating around here. Um, the prosthesis that we made off of these were phenomenal. But again, maxillary arches on day of surgery are a different beast than mandibular arches. And mandibular arches, um, every scanner on the market almost struggles with. Where, <clears throat> so here's the mandibular arch, just super difficult to scan. This patient's floor of the mouth is equal with the ridge. Um, it did a really good job with the IO Connect scan bodies. And again, it did a really good job with the um, intraoral photogrammetry scan bodies on the lower. Where I found some difficulty was uh, here, where I was trying to get my markers on the retromolar pad. Um, and I actually had to stitch uh, two separate scans together, which is easy to do in ExoCAD, um, to be able to get my full soft tissue scan where I had both my markers on my retromolar pads and all of my soft tissue scanned. Probably one of the harder cases ever here because there's blood everywhere, sutures everywhere, and the floor of the mouth is, there's like no uh, keratinized tissue anywhere. Um, and so we were able to get the scans, although we had to do it in multiple different attempts because it wouldn't stitch the arch together confluently. The prosthesis that we made fit phenomenally, both with the intraoral photogrammetry and the IO Connect workflow. Um, so just a phenomenal scanner there. I think improvement wise, the algorithms on, on lower arches need to be slightly improved for the soft tissue scanning. Um, and in a, in a, especially when it detects any type of movement of the tissue, uh, which when you have a sedated patient all, oftentimes also could be difficult. Um, okay, so that is my kind of overview of the Shining in a nutshell. I would say this is a winner. Uh, the Elite Scanner here uh, ranks top amongst all scanners on the market. But then you throw in that intraoral photogrammetry component and it, it, it just it just is so impressive the way that it, it instantly brings in those um, informations there. And it also works super well with um, other modern scan body workflows like IO Connect from True Abutment. So this is a winner in my mind. I'm gonna I'm gonna definitely um, make this probably my main my main scanner alongside my Trios 5, which I absolutely really love. Um, I still think there's some things that Trios 5 do, uh, does a little bit better, um, like for example, um, lower arch scanning on day of surgery is maybe just a tiny bit better, although that auto delete scan body sometimes and the AI you have to turn off and things like that, that's not perfect either. Um, I do think that for the, the value you get here with the intraoral photogrammetry and you know, I have an iCam, um, so it, it wasn't as important to me to have this workflow, but if you don't have photogrammetry, this is phenomenal. And um, even if you don't use the photogrammetry uh, tool, like you don't restore all on X and you don't just, you don't do that kind of stuff, just as a general scanner, um, it's a good scanner. The three different tip sizes are amazing. The speed, um, the color clarity is gonna rank this top anyway. So it's still a great value. Now, is this scanner perfect? No. I, I kind of wish I could combine all the best things I like about each scanner uh, into one, one scanner. Um, I do like their user interface. It's simple. Their software is great and it's on the first version. I can't, uh, for this scanner, they're gonna keep making it better. Um, things I don't like, it has to be plugged into the computer to play in the scan software. That hit me multiple times as being annoying where I wanted to go back and open a case. Somebody else was using the scanner and I was on a different laptop and it says, please plug in your scanner to proceed or something like that. I hate that. I don't understand why you would ever do that. Um, I also think that they need to improve their auto stitching algorithm on the removable workflow where when you scan the intaglio of a denture and you scan your denture 360, and then you scan the soft tissues in the mouth and it auto aligns it. It does a really good job auto aligning it 
but then it, I think it needs another step where it's going to let you either pick common points or do an iterative closest point algorithm and settle that model together um, better. And then I would love a color coded heat map of how far off that data is. As a clinician, that's important to me. Um, I also don't like that when you do the intraoral photogrammetry, when you set the case up ahead of time, um, let's say you pick six implants and then you proceed on and you scan your pre-op markers and everything like that and you're ready to go through the process, but on day of surgery, you're there and stuff happens and now instead of six implants, you have five, it won't let you like go back and change it. So you like have to start all over and then it's annoying to get the, the other scans out of the system. So like there's so much variability in clinical dentistry. Like sometimes you might plan on placing six, but you place seven or five or four. And to have it all pre-set up like that, not being able to edit it on the fly, unless there's something I'm missing in the software, I, I couldn't figure out how to do it. Um, but other than that, these are just small software issues that I think once they get dialed in, it's gonna be a hard scanner to beat. So guys, definitely worth checking out the Shining Elite scanner. I got mine from Cadre. Cadre is just a phenomenal company. Um, I love the support that they've given me. They've helped me install scan bodies on it. They've remoted into my software. Um, they've just been phenomenal. They know digital dentistry better than anybody else. So I recommend checking it out through them. But if not, you can't go wrong with this scanner, guys. So I hope this review helps you. It's kind of a real world uh, you know, review. Multiple different scanner operators, multiple different case scenarios. If you like this review, just comment down below. Uh, let us know that you uh, watched it and that you would like more of this kind of content from Mod.